Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. First episode of a new series for you today. Caldonio Calcio is finally here. It's something that's been planning. I've been planning for a couple of months and I've finally got it ready to go. So, if you haven't checked out the little intro video, it only takes two minutes. I'll put that up there right now. But today's episode, we're literally just going to meet the club, the staff, the one player that I've got, the finances, have a look around the league, what's expected of us. And then from Tuesday onwards, we will start with games in Serie D. So let's get into episode one of Caldonio Calcio with Roberto Baggio. Here we are, the home of Caldonio Calcio. So me, Roberto Baggio, manager. His hometown club, it's a little town in uh, Veneto, um, which is a region of northern Italy. Closest rivals, Vicenza Calcio. Uh, we have other ones, sort of, uh, Treviso and a few others that are local in the area. But we're going to hopefully build a historical rivalry as we go along in the series. That will be good. We have one player that I've put in. So the squad is completely bare at the moment. Apart from I've decided to put my main man, John Parkin. I haven't been able to manage him yet in 20, FM 2019. He's very likely it's going to retire at the end of, end of the season anyway. Um, and I thought, right, I'm going to put one player in the team. I didn't want to do anything stupid. So we've gone with John Parkin, target man, 36 years old. He's still pretty decent, apart from his physicals of acceleration and agility. But he's the only member of the playing squad at the moment. So we've got a very, very, very busy two or three weeks coming. The stadium is the DeLonghi Stadium, 15,000 seat and stadium just built this year. I've taken a picture that is actually a, an artist's impression of York City's new ground. But this is what I'm anticipating here. We've got the Diodora training complex. We have got four and a half star training facilities and four and a half star youth facilities. <clears throat> so the idea is that we build more of a youth development save as well. We're still going to look at bringing in more homegrown, so more Italians. <clears throat> I'm not setting any specific rules for the save. But I am looking at trying to get in a really good batch of Italian youngsters into the team. So there's the Deodara training complex. There's the DeLonghi Stadium named after our owner and president, Fabio DeLonghi. Right, so let's go and meet the board. So because the we did originally have five members, um, but because it's playing up slightly in the database, in the editor... I've taken a few off. So Fabio DeLonghi is the president. He's the owner of DeLonghi, the coffee machine makers. He's worth like four and a half billion. He has pumped in a lot of money. I'm not going to spend it all at once. I've got, I think, a bank balance of 10 million and a transfer kit of 1 million. At this level, I'm not going to be signing anyone because we are semi-professional. Directors, we've got one of my all-time heroes, Giuseppe Signori. What a goal scorer he was. And Alessandro Del Piero. On our staff list, we've got a couple of guys that were originally directors. So, uh, Pierluigi Casaraghi is now my assistant manager. Um, and also we had Cairo Ferreira. He is also a director, but he's also my head of youth development. And Filippo Galli, who you will remember from AC Milan days, look. Um, a lot of these players are linked to Baggio, so... Filippo Galli, I think, played with him at Bologna or Brescia. There, he played with him at Brescia. Um, who else have we got? Tommaso Rocchi is local. He's a Veneto born. Uh, he currently manages Lazio under 18s in real life. I've got him in as my under 20s manager. Just a local born coach. And um, then we've got Zambrotta, under 18s manager. Uh, Marco Tardelli. A lot of you will remember, if you're a little bit older than me, <clears throat> I think he looks like he's been with Trapattoni in the Island days. Um, he's my under-20s assistant manager. We've got Pali Yuka, one of my all-time greats of the 90s, goalkeeper. He's my goalkeeping coach. Obviously, he played with um, Baggio at... He would have played with him at Inter. Inter or Bologna. Probably Inter. Vincenzo Pincololi. Would have been with Baggio in the right early days in the Italy, Italy set up fitness coach. Bit of a legend, I think, on FM. I think a lot of people would have picked him up at some point to be their fitness coach. 
Um, next one is John Andrews. He was a competition winner. He's a subscriber to the channel, watches all my vids. He won a little competition, so he is in as a youth team coach. Benito Carboni, one of my, I suppose, guilty pleasures. He actually started in the game somewhere else as assistant manager, um, but I pulled him in. He's my under-20s coach. Mark Juliano, Juventus centre-half. He's just a club coach. Average across the board. Obviously, would have played with Baggio. Would he play with him at Juventus? No, he wouldn't have done so. It would just have just been with an Italian national team. Luco Carbonaro is just a physio that we got in. Chief scout Gianluca Nani. I think a lot of you will know Gianluca Nani as well. He's been in England for a fair bit. He's my chief scout. He was chief scout when Baggio was at Brescia. And last but not least, I've taken him out of the Albanian national team. He is now just a scout, struggling for a scout that we knew, and that was Italian that had played. Um, but it all fits in with ex-90s footballers, all there, ready to push us up the league. I'll just quickly show you the squad. Look, there's my squad, completely empty. Nothing in the under-20s. We are in a competition in that. We're all going to get absolutely smashed in that. Um, under-18s, they're not really in anything. They're just playing friendlies, but we've got no players to speak of. I am going to try and sign a load and on non contract just to try and bolster the numbers. Competitions, we've got the Serie D Girona B, which I think covers a region of Italy. It covers Benito and I think it's Lombardy, I think. Um, Italian Serie D Cup, they're not, the board are not bothered about that. And then we've got the Tim Cup, um, which we're not expected to do well and get knocked out in the first round, but it plays a, a competitive game before the league season starts, which is very important. Here is the league. A lot of relegations. We are expected to finish in the playoff play. So that's our target for the season. Um, but we are going to have a much bigger budget than most. These are big teams. Como, I think, is the biggest. I think they're favourites for it this year. Um, they've got a couple that are on sort of like the top. He is absolutely class for the standard that we are in. So we're aiming at semi-pro players. We'll be getting a few in on non-contracts. But the league itself, the rules are an absolute minefield to start with. So the match day, you know, the playing 11 must have 420s in the starting, in the playing 11. So I think that must mean subs that come on as well. Three under 19s and one under 18. So that's going to be really difficult when I'm purchasing players. It will be freebies, but obviously we do have a little bit of money to play with. There's obviously a, a playoff, a qualification playoff as well for promotion. Uh, <clears throat> and that's about it. 18 in the league. We are expected to fit up here. We have got a very, very busy season. Um, the Serie D, we've got the Italian Cup there coming up in a couple of weeks. We've got no place for that, so we need to make some moves pretty quickly. And then we have a load of friendlies, absolute mountain of friendlies to come as well to get us prepared. So by the start of August, I want all my players in. That's two weeks all my players in, ready to hit them games there, if friendlies, and then the league season. I think that's this cup. We've got a cup, Serie D cup there, and then the league actually starts at the end of September. So luckily, we've got a lot of a lot of time to put a squad together. Finances, here we go. So DeLonghi has put 10 million in the bank. We've got one million transfer budget. I have put him as a sugar daddy, but as a background sugar daddy, so that he will only pump money in for a certain bit. I think, and I think once you reach a level, you'll stop, which I thought was quite realistic. No, obviously, no debts and loans. We've got a sponsor kit, big sponsor kit, because we've got DeLonghi, who's the owner, and the training ground sponsored by Deodora, so that will keep our coffers going nicely. They are running out in a couple of years' time. We are going to be limited. It's all right having all this money, but we are going to be limited to what players we can bring in. All the players that are currently interested at the moment are all semi-pro players. It's not as if I can attract big name players from two divisions higher or anything like that. So the money is just going to be there. We have got a lot going out. We have got a lot going out in wages, look. Um, a lot going out. So that's going to be a good chunk of cash there going out every single season. But I thought that was important to get the backbone of the, of the staff in and hopefully the majority will stay with us. Kasaragi, a big fan of his until he got them bad injuries in his career. Cairo Ferreira, he was, a, it, he was Italy's under-21s manager, then Sampdoria. He had a bad spell at Juventus as well. Tremendous right back in the day. I think the staff are going to be very useful to us. I think the scouting system is going to be vital. 
we need to get that up and running as soon as possible so facilities page there we go 15,000 seater stadium we've also got the Deodora training center as well um Synthet synthetic pitch we've put in because um, I'm a bit of a fan of a 3G. Good corp top corporate seats, facilities, superb training facilities, which you would expect because it's a brand new club, brand new stadium. Affiliates, I've got Kievo who are going to prove pretty useful there in the region as well. Um, they've got a couple of decent youngsters which will hopefully be able to get on loan. We are predicted to finish fourth. Caledonese is the other team that are in the town. Um, so the backstory was that they didn't want anything to do with us. We ended up buying their land and building our stadium on it. And now they play at an awful stadium down the road. So they're not going to like us very much. But they're a couple of leagues below. I don't think we'll ever see them pop up in a game apart from playing in friendlies. And I think, guys, that is about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the weekend now trying to sign as many players as I can. We will come back. I think we're going to come back for the... It's Copper Italia. So the first game in the club's history, the first official game. It only gives me, what, 13 days to put the team together. So we're probably not going to have a full squad by any means. But it's important that we have the first official game next episode. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the little backstory now. So we'll dive straight in. Proper episodes from Tuesday morning. Um, if you are new around here, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And drop a like in there. If I can get to 20, 25 likes for this first episode, it would be much appreciated. It does, as you've heard it before, it does really help the channel grow. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you on Tuesday, first game of the season. Cheers, guys. See you later.